everybody, Dr. Newman here, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a different type of hemodialysis. This is called CVVH, or Continuous Veno-Venous Hemodialysis. You'll often, hear, you'll often hear it referred to as CRRT, which is Continuous Renal Replacement Therapy. The goal of Continuous Renal Replacement Therapy is to replace the lost function of the kidneys, fluid and or waste removal cannot replace the endocrine function of the kidneys, such as the RAS system. CVVH, or CRRT, uses a highly permeable membrane. It removes fluid and or solutes through ultrafiltration and or dialysis. Sometimes CVVH, or CRRT, will use dialysate and or replacement fluid to replace fluids that, or electrolytes, that are lost through removal of the plasma or fluid volume. CVVH, or CRRT, runs continuous, 24 hours a day, 7 days per week, as prescribed by the physician, although it is usually short-term in duration, most often lasting less than 3 to 5 days. Usually, CVVH is performed through a dialysis catheter, whether that be temporary or if a patient is a previous hemodialysis patient and has a permanent catheter, then that can also be used. CRT, or CVVHDF, is continuous renal replacement therapy, as I said, or continu continuous venovenous hemodiafiltration, CVVHDF. Now, considering that this seems to be one type of modality, there are different uh, modes or functions within this type of dialysis. We're going to talk very briefly about some of those. You can see in the graphic below that CRRT, or blood purification through ultrafiltration or hemofiltration, occurs through many methods, convection and diffusion or both. One method that removes fluid only is called SCUF, S-C-U-F. This removes fluid only when there are no waste products that need to be removed. Essentially, this is similar to ultrafiltration. This does not use dialysate nor replacement fluid. Another method that's used is called CVVH which is continuous venovenous hemofiltration. This removes large volumes of fluid and waste from the patient. It uses replacement fluids, also known as substitution solution. It uses the replacement fluids to maintain electrolyte and acid-base balance, but there is no dialysate. In other words, in CVVH, there is replacement fluids, but there is not the use of dialysate. Moving further towards the middle, you have CVVHDF, which is the continuous venovenous hemodialysis hemodiafiltration. This removes large volumes of toxin-filled plasma while still maintaining electrolyte balance. This form of CVVH or CRRT Remain, maintains electrolyte balance. It uses dialysate and replacement fluid. So CVVHDF form of CRRT uses dialysate and replacement fluid to remove large volumes of toxin-filled plasma. One final method of CVVH or CRRT that we're going to talk about is continuous venovenous hemofiltration, or CVVHDF. Primarily, this mode uses diffusion along with a cleansing fluid known as dialysate to remove the uh, waste products that build up in the blood. So CVVHD uses diffusion along with a cleansing fluid known as dialysate to boost the removal of waste products. <coughs> Excuse me. There are certainly benefits and risk associated with CRRT as there are with any type of modality. Some of the specific benefits are the continuous and gentle removal of fluid and waste. 
This is suitable for use in hemodynamically unstable patients. It removes fluid at a slower pace and therefore has less neurologic uh, uh, impacts and does not cause the uh, rapid removal of fluid that would make a patient more hemodynamically unstable. This allows for very tight control of electrolytes and acid-base balance. Basically, the adjustments of removal of fluid are made on an hourly basis based on the amount of intake that the patient is given as well as the output that the patient produces. It gives precise volume control and as I said, it's very adaptable to immediately, um, immediate changing situations. So if your patient were to code while receiving the CRRT, you could stop this modality, return the fluid that is in the process of being filtered so that it will help boost the patient's intravascular volume. Having said that, this uh, procedure is done only in intensive care units where there are immediate access to resources and physicians to help maintain the stability of this patient. This mode is very effective in control of uremia, hypophosphatemia, and hyperkalemia. It gives you rapid control of metabolic acidosis, and patients usually receive better nutritional support while on this mode because they can have uh, a full protein diet the toxins will be removed through the dialysis um, procedure. As I said, it is available 24 hours a day and it's continuous so that it's available throughout the length of the physician's prescription that this uh, type of dialysis occurs. Usually it is short term, three to five days. I have seen it go longer, but usually the patients that are on this type of dialysis treatment for longer periods of time have a, poor, a more poor prognosis. Um, this also can be used as an um, adjuvant therapy in sepsis to remove the cytokines that we talked about earlier. And it does have some advantages in helping with short-term immediate problems so it can quickly remove toxins related to poisoning and those sorts of things. Um, it is risky. It is labor intensive. In most institutions that I'm familiar with, the patients that are on the CRRT are at a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning that there's one nurse that's taking care of this one patient that's on this modality. There is a local hospital around this area that does not um, have that ratio. The, the patient that's on the CRRT is included in a regular ICU assignment which would consist of potentially two to three patients. So this patient could be sort of part of a three patient assignment. This uh, CRRT is expensive. It's expensive to um, maintain, it's expensive to continue, and the further that it lasts or the longer that it lasts, the more expensive it becomes. So it's not something that you would want to provide simply because it's convenient and the patient gets continuous um, and general removal of fluid. It's a temporary process that you would use until the patient becomes more stable and is able to undergo intermittent hemodialysis. There of course are all the complications related to access such as infection and the risk of hemorrhage if a line were to become disconnected or there were a problem in the pump and the blood wasn't able to be returned, then the patient would, um, if, the, if the line becomes disconnected, then they could certainly hemorrhage or bleed out. Um, hopefully the nurse is quickly available to prevent that from happening. Um, oftentimes these patients will have difficulty with managing their uh, coagulation, and so they will need to be given uh, heparin to help keep the blood from clotting once it's removed from the body into the filter and then returned back to the body. This presents, uh, also presents other complications related to heparin-induced thrombocytopenia and other things that we're not going to cover here. But I will say that in my experience in doing this procedure, it is not uncommon for blood clots to form inside the filter of the machine and whenever that happens it signals the machine to stop filtering because the filter has been clogged.
and then once that happens, you're no longer allow, able to return the blood that's clotted back to the patient. So everything that is in the tubing coming from the patient into the machine, and then the blood that's in the tubing that's already headed back towards the patient has to be wasted. And I don't know the exact amount in cc's of that blood, but it can be significant. One of the other complications or risks associated with this is hypothermia. Anytime you're taking blood out of the body at the temperature that the body is currently at and exposing it to room air temperatures, of course, the blood is going to then cool down. Whenever you're returning that back into the body, you're returning room air temperature or close to back into the body and the patient is therefore exposed to the uh, risk of developing hypothermia. Sometimes these machines will come with an external warmer so that the blood can be returned through a warmer uh, or can be run through a warmer machine before being returned to the patient. Um, that's often used in um, most cases that I've taken care of in most cases of hemodialysis or the CRRT that I've taken care of. Of course, a big risk associated with the CRRT is hypotension. Anytime you're removing fluid from a patient, they are at risk of having hypotension related to hypovolemia, particularly if you do have a complication and you're unable to return the blood back to the patient. As with any invasive procedure, these patients are at risk for infection. In addition to that, they're at risk for depletion of electrolytes such as potassium, phosphorus, and magnesium. A depletion of any of those electrolytes can have significant impact on the patient's uh, cardiac um, status. It can cause arrhythmias and other complications relating to further uh, hypoperfusion to the kidneys. As we talked about earlier in one of the previous sessions, having a high potassium level leads to having a low heart rate. So remember, it's an inverse relationship, high potassium, low heart rate. Having a low potassium leads to having a high heart rate. Similarly, if you remove too much magnesium during this process, you're also going to have uh, dysrhythmias occur. So if you remove too much magnesium, then your patient is at risk for developing tachycardic rhythms that are potentially life-threatening. 